Well, this will be fun. I know. I'm excited. Um, okay, we're going to start off with you stating your name. Okay. And the years that you worked at Skyline and what you taught. And do okay. Full for okay. My name is it, oh, my name is Ginger Gunn, and I taught from 1968 to 1973. I taught all different kinds of history. I even taught an, I taught an economics class, and um, that was it. I think that was it. Yeah. You said your name is Ginger Gunn. It is. Did I say was? Uh, oh, you did say it right. You had the right tense. I yeah. <laughs> I started Ginger Vaughn the first year, yes. and then and now it's Ginger Gunn. Well, we were just talking about that. How was it to walk in? How old were you when you started teaching? I, I was 21 years old. 21 years and old. And I was teaching 18-year-olds. Oh, and I wasn't married the first year. So, quite interesting. <laughs> I used to get love notes. <laughs> I'd come in and I'd have three or four little folded love notes on my desk and, you know, that kind of thing. Were they just razzing you or were they yeah, serious? Yeah, no, they were just razzing me. You know, they would <laughs> just thought that was so funny. And then when I'd be teaching, they'd be like this staring at me and I oh you guys stop it <laughs> well there were those of us who thought you were pretty good so looking. cute they were so cute well yeah I guess in those days huh <laughs> uh, were we all <laughs> yes yes uh, why did you get into teaching you know all I as I thought about that question um, I always wanted to teach when I was little I used to play we used to play teacher you know, we'd play students and teacher, and, and I think I was always the teacher because I was the bossiest one in my group, you know, and I think I've always loved to teach, and I love to, to boss people around. <laughs> so we, we felt that way. Yeah. Oh, I bet you did. I bet you did. I have no problem. Well, you had to take charge. <laughs> oh, you better believe it. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you, I hope you've given this a little thought. You have some images or memories of, of Skyline, not so much that Randy forgot his... <clears throat> uh, do you have some images or memories of Skyline itself? And oh, I do. I do. I do. I remember just walking into Skyline and it was so huge and, you know, I had graduated from a small high school and, a, you know, just all of a sudden here I'm in this great big gigantic airy open skyline and then I remember the buckets catching the water when the roof leaked. Do you remember that? Guess what? And what? It still goes on. Does it really? And some idiot in California designed it but we would you know we'd all be walking around the buckets and our rooms had buckets in them and I do remember that. I do. And then of course the the students. Remember the cute some of the cute students. So. Um, you uh, mentioned it. Uh, that you knew Ernie Pisa before you came to work. I there. did. He was my junior high principal. Yeah, Start at Granite again. Park. Ernie Pisa. Yes. Was, because Ernie. Not here oh, I'm sorry. Ernie Pisa was my seventh grade, eighth grade, ninth grade principal. Yes. Yeah. Good old Ernie Pisa. And he did not like us. I remember when I was in junior high, I was I was one of the cheerleaders, and there was some big. I can't remember the issue. But he didn't like us, and he pulled us all in his office and just really bawled us out. And he was always stern, very, very stern. We were scared to death of him. So, and I think the kids at Skyline were a little scared of him too. <laughs> Did that change when you went to? Uh, was it a different relationship? When you went to oh, he tr always treated me like I was a little girl. Always. I, he never could get the picture that I was an adult ever. I mean, I was always a little girl, which annoyed me. Really annoyed me. So, but he, you know, he had his good points. I think he ran a good school, but. Um, as you think about teaching today and teaching back then, would you do a little comparison about how it was to teach students and the challenges you had then and the things that were easier then compared to today? Boy, I don't know. Um, I teach junior high now, which is, you know, a whole different mentality. Um, I think students back then were a little more focused, a little more, there was, and there certainly was a lot more school spirit. School spirit has really died down, and I think it's been replaced by, I don't know, other forms of entertainment that you kids didn't have, you know, we didn't have when we were growing up. But uh, I just feel like the students that I taught in high school were very, you know, quite focused. Some of them were, you know, off the wall like most kids get to be, but 
I think kids nowadays are really hard to stay focused. It's hard to keep them on task, you know, that kind of a thing. And, and maybe it's the influence of the video stuff and whatever, but, you know, I, I see a difference there. Is there, are there any things that you've thought about reminiscing that you miss about that era? Maybe you've covered some of them. Are there other things that you miss about that era? Hmm. Have I missed anything about that era? You know, when you teach in high school, you just, you're so caught up in it. It's such an exciting time of life. You know, I mean, the kids are all excited and the activities were really fun. Everybody gets excited about that. You know, I kind of miss that. You know, I mean, you still get a little bit of that now, but I just don't think kids are as excited about activities. Assemblies? Oh, I mean, nobody missed assemblies in those days. Now, I think hardly anybody goes to assemblies in high school. So, you know, that's kind of a shame because I was always really loving and involved with that kind of stuff. I just loved it. Can you think of any students that you particularly remember? Oh, Tell yeah. Tell us a little bit about why. Oh, yeah. Oh, I can remember Richard Erian. And I hate if Rich is here at that at the reunion. I'm sorry, Richard, but he was so cute. I mean, they would just tease me. Those football guys would tease me and tease me. Well, he grew up to be, you know, a doctor, as we all know, and he was my mother's doctor. And I told him, I said, Richard, if I ever wake up on a gurney and you're standing over me, I'm gonna slug you. Don't you dare touch me. <laughs> anyway, that was, he was just, he's such a sweetheart now, but he was a wild boy. He was one of those little wild and crazy guys. I remember him. And I remember um, my good friend, Linda Barker, Linda Bowling, and her little boyfriend, Randy Barker, were always out in the hall. And I was always rounding them up, telling them to get to class. And now they're some of our really good friends. So anyway, those were always cute kids. And my cheerleaders were cute. I was the cheerleading sponsor. And I loved all of those girls. They were such darling kids. And who else do I remember? Oh, I remember the kid one day in one of my classes. I don't even know who it was. And I think he was either drunk or stoned. And I'm, I was teaching along and I watched him just go like that. And he fell out of his desk on the floor. I didn't even know what to do with him. I thought, well, hmm, now what do I do? So I remember that little child. And just, you know, good, good friends, good teacher friends. I remember Mr. Workman would, remember Verl Workman, you know, and he would give me a hard time. He'd gather up all the papers that my kids left and come and hand them to me and say, you didn't clean your room up, Mrs. Gunn. Oh, sorry. Anyway. That's fun stuff. Now you'll be glad to know that Richard Erian is one of the chairmen of this. Uh, is he? Oh, Richard. Oh, Richard. You know I just love you. I do. But boy, he was a little devil. He was a stinker in high school, <laughs> and he knows it. So there you go, Rich. <laughs> I'll be using that. Oh, for sure. <laughs> OK, here's the bottom line. OK. What advice do you have for the class of 1969 today? Oh, what advice do I have? for those, the, the, the kids that graduated in 69. Oh, gall, just keep on keeping on, guys. You know, keep learning, keep having fun, and you know, and I think most of them do. I really do. And that's kind of my attitude. I wanna keep learning. I love to learn, and I love to, I love to keep finding new ways to kind of have some fun, and then don't be so serious. That's my advice. <laughs> that's a good idea. Good advice for us. Oh, for us. well, I hope so. Whoops. Oh, Randy, you're not a very good shot. <laughs> anything else you want to chat about? Well, I just can't think of anything else. Those were really good years. I was putting my husband through law school. And, you know, those were really fun years. They really were. So, anyway, I'm glad I, I'm glad I was there. Why did you leave Skyline? Well, because Steve was um, called into the Army. I left Skyline because... Oh, I'm sorry. I left Skyline because my husband was um, called into the Army after law school. He, had, he was in ROTC, and they gave him a deferment until he was through with law school, but then we had to go spend three months at Fort Benning, Georgia. So I left. Yeah. And then came back? And then I came back, and then I had my own my dance school for 28 years, which is the other half of me. Okay, and then I got back into teaching in, uh, 11 years ago. So, and here I am. <laughs> I was surprised, I'll shut it down, I was surprised to find you in Granite District still. I am here. here. Good beer.
son and my daughter and my daughter and my daughter. And then that's my husband. And the other photos? Yeah. Oh, these are my baby and, and they're all my family. <laughs> yeah. Those are my kids when they were little. I like that one because I can remember that they were cute. And um, my married daughter. I've only got one married child. The rest of them are lazy. Good. Yep. Ready? I'll oh, do it. Do it again with the key. Oh. Just like you did the first time. Oh, okay. Ready? Okay. Here I go. Oh, where's your house? There you go. You can go ahead now and to your desk. And I'll just walk over here. And I'll sit down. Let's see if I got that on. Oh. He's a wonderful guy. Absolutely spectacular and made a big bar mark in American education in general, you know. Let's hope I don't have to run and grab that other battery that I would go at. Reagan called him in and told him, the Ted told my class this after I started teaching at the U. I had him out right after he left D.C. And he, got, he says, is the press here today? And there's no press and stuff. And he said, are you sworn to secrecy? And he pointed at me and I said, yeah, I am, Ted. And he says, well, I want to tell you a story. He says, President Reagan called me in right after I was selected Secretary of, in of Education. And he said, Ted, the first job on your plate is to get rid of your department. And so he left, and as he was driving home, he says, you know, public education made me what I am, you know? I'm a public educator. I went to a public school, I went to a public university, you know? And I'm going to do everything I can 
to keep the department. <laughs> wow, and, so that, and that for four, yeah. Public Ed runs that far back. Yeah. For four years, Ted Bell made Reagan think he was destroying the department, and uh, the whole time he was saving the department. Really an interesting story. A really good book could be written on that if anybody had time to trace it or if the record were there. There's probably no record of it because Ted was probably not putting it in memos and, right. and you know, the president certainly wasn't keeping anything on it. Unless there was somebody close to him. Yeah. yeah. I wish I'd, wish I'd thought about it before I would have talked to somebody about writing it while Ted was still alive. Right. But he died a number of years ago. That's fascinating. Yeah. In light of where the Republicans are on. Yeah. yeah. You know, I told you I left here thinking I was a Republican. Yeah. <laughs> Went up to the Northwest and found out I was a Congress. Got baptized, huh? <laughs> yeah. And came back here and found out I was a Democrat. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's good news, Randy. <laughs> yeah. um, listen, let's uh, let's get this out of the way. Okay. Uh, I'm just. These are very pedestrian type questions. Uh, if you'll keep in mind, I'm not going to have my voice recorded here, so. Uh, don't give me yes or no answers, answer in full sentences. Do you want me to give you a sort of a repeat of the question and my answer? More or less. Okay. More or less. Re right. Restate it as you answer. That sure. That'd be great. Let's start. Can you hear me over there? I'm still there. Yep. Okay. Well, this time it will work. I got wall power. All right. Sorry about that, darn it. That's okay, Randy. I haven't interviewed for a while and you haven't done press reports for a while. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my current assignment is I'm going out doing these many news reports are you? teachers and students and programs. Oh, well, I, I take the insult back then. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, I am the, the photographer, writer, editor, voice You do writer. it all, huh? Uh, yeah, nobody's saying I'm not doing a good job, so, yeah. but it's, yeah. it's fun to be back out. And do you put those up on your website? Oh, you do. Is that what you do? We, do. we actually, I put them on YouTube. Oh. I started putting them on our own server, Uh huh. and I got a small smattering of people with looking at them. I put them on YouTube. I got a thousand views the first week. Really? Wow. Most of them local oh, yeah. inquiries? Well, I don't know, but I'm sure they will. Yeah. There's this, um, you know, it's, it's funny. You, you put something on the internet and it has its own form of credibility. Oh, yeah. it's on the internet. It must be important. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, it is. Yeah, really. It's really a revolutionary thing going on out there. I've enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, Let's, let's try this again. All right, let's go again. Okay. Maybe I can make them better this time. <laughs> I, I regret missing some of the spontaneity because that's always really okay. good. Let's start off with you stating in a full sentence your name, the years you worked at Skyline, and what you taught. I'm Ted Wilson. I taught at Skyline from 1966 in January until I left Skyline in March of 1973, one of the great times of my life. I taught history, I taught geography, I taught government, and I taught economics, and it was fun. What images or memories do you have of teaching a skyline during that era? Uh, it was a rich time in American high school history. It was a fantastic group of young people. 98% um, of them dedicated to education, 98% coming from pretty good homes where the economics were decent. Not luxurious, but decent. Um, there was a lot of community, a lot of fun, uh, uh, great athletic achievements on the football field in particular, and a few good basketball teams. And uh, just a great time for me, uh, pretty young myself, I was only 10 years older than my students. Uh, a really fun time for me to associate with, with you folks and, and your class. Um. There were some challenges. You spoke about those a minute ago. Let's talk about the challenges of teaching and then on the flip side, the rewards you got out of it. Sure. Well, the challenges of teaching at Scholarly were there. Uh, first of all, at one point we had 3,100 kids in that school. You might recall how crowded it was and we had like three assemblies or two assemblies as I remember, four lunch periods to accommodate the numbers. Each one of us taught 225 kids, unless we had special ed or something, you know, that was very special. We had to teach large numbers of kids every day. It was a tough time to get to the middle. You always remember the bright kids, and you remember the ones that gave you trouble, but the ones in the middle sort of escaped you. So all of that came down as a challenge. Drugs were, it was kind of a drug culture then. 
uh, more on the outside world than the school, but that affected, in a sense, what was going on in the school itself. It was Vietnam. Uh, there was still a lot of stuff going around on Vietnam and difficulties with that. Uh, those were the challenges, but uh, uh, they were not overcomable. We overcame them, and, and uh, working together, students and teachers alike, we able to make it work. What rewards during that era? Uh, the, yeah, the rewards of teaching for me were immense. You know, it was a formative time in my life, just like for the younger, 10-year younger high school students. Uh, I was afraid of speaking before I came to Skyline, and now I'm a, you know, I'm a motor mouth. Uh, Skyline brought that to me. <laughs> for all you people out there that see me as a motor mouth, it's your fault. <laughs> That's what made me a politician, I guess. Uh, I love the, I love the um, experience of students that really wanted a personal relationship and would come in and talk to me about their problems and, and their educational needs and brought their families in on it. You know, there was so much of that that was very, very rich. I remember I had Gordon B. Hinckley's daughter. I don't know if she was in your class, but he came one time and I said, uh, you know, at one of those evenings where the parents come out and find out how the kids are doing, and I said, hi, President Hinckley. He says, don't call me that. Call me Gordon. I'm just Gordon tonight. So, you know, the parents were like that. I had many prestigious parents, all of whom, you know, said, hey, let's work together. So that was fun. And I think just the thrill of finding myself and being able to convey that was a very rich personal kind of back and forth thing. Teachers learn a lot more than the students, not only about the subject they teach, but about their own lives because te students are great to bounce off of. And, and that uh, really makes teaching a rich experience. I didn't ask this before, but why did you teach political science? Uh, I had a degree in political science, and my minor was in geography. And then a little bit later on, in uh, the school year 68-69, I went to the University of Washington in Seattle and got a master's degree in economics. So that pretty much put me in that groove, in the social studies groove. Um, what do you miss about the era itself, uh, not only in the school, but just the, the whole societal era that we were in back then? Well, I miss, I think, the most about the, let's say, the 66 to 73 era that I was at Skyline, which 69 was in the middle of. I miss the really esteem that, you, that American high schools had. Uh, it was a good time for American high schools. Uh, people saw it as a rich place to be very active in activities, a place to uh, learn by community venture, a place to uh, really study hard. I mean, the demands on study were pretty high. And I think that whole era, really, the high school was sort of the epicenter of many social activities in America. Parents came together more often. And so, we've, in a way, we've lost some of that richness. Uh, the electronic world has peeled us away. Uh, the social world has somewhat pulled us away. Issues are now more contentious, in a way, between racial and other kinds of divides. And and so, I don't know, I, it was just a, a great time to be in high school and to be in a high school. It was exciting. Remember, those halls were very noisy. Still are. I, not much yeah. has changed. Have you walked those halls in the last few years? Uh, no, I same haven't. Same color, same tile? Yeah, yeah. Uh, here's a question I hadn't asked previously. I don't know if you can think of something off the top of your head. Are there any classroom anecdotes that stick out in your mind? Uh, one day, it was Friday. And it was a Friday before a football game. Nobody is in either the teaching or learning mode. And when I was in the Army, I see, I, I weighed 145 pounds when I was at Skyline. I had learned to arm wrestle from a guy that was very, very good at it. He had been a professional arm wrestler, if there is such a category. He was in the NBA of arm wrestlers. He taught me a technique of twisting the arm of my opponent and going down this way rather than taking them head on and it changes the leverage or something. So I thought I'd take on a few football players and I had some big kids in my class and one by one I demolished them. I, I promise you Randy, I demolished them. 
But right in the middle of one of those, the door opened in the back and it was Ernest Pisa, the principal. And he looked at me and he went, Mr. Wilson, I walked out into the hall. Now, Ernie Pisa had a very strict demeanor, not only over students, but over teachers. And I thought, I thought I'd be in my car driving away with my pink slip. And Ernie said, what are you doing? I said, you know, we've worked, worked all week, Mr. Pisa, on some hard subject matter. And I just thought I'd beat a, full, a few football players in arm wrestling. He said, did you beat them? And I said, I beat them. And he said, well, have fun. And he laughed. <laughs> he forgot what he came to tell me. <laughs> it was fun. And he had a pretty good sense of humor. <laughs> you got away with him. Yeah. I, just, I won't use this on tape, but I'm in contact with his son, Greg. Oh, are you really? Uh, going to supply us with some material about his dad that we'll use in this tape. Oh, I loved Ernie. Yeah. Uh, Ernie and I, I started off a little competitive with him because he's such a grumpy old guy, you know. But when you get him in his office, he wasn't. And I really enjoyed Ernest Pisa. He was a great guy. When we're through, let me tell you about when the FBI came and questioned me and my friends in Ernie's office. Really? When we're done. Wow. Um, oh, to, yeah. Uh, any students that you remember that uh, come to mind? Well, Rich Arian always comes around because I knew Rich later in life, and so he's very cemented in my, my we, we served on some church work up at the university at one time and together, and, and his wife Gloria, who I think was one of your classmates, I may be wrong about that. Uh, Mary Dixon, I think she was in your class, she was a great friend of mine. Um, a lot of names don't come to my head because, you know, I should have brought my yearbook to pick the individuals out. Uh, when you get as old as I am, you remember faces, you remember scenes, you remember things, but the, ad, the names themselves don't come back as quickly. Do you have any advice for the class of 69? Um, now I'm 70 years old, I can give out advice. And my advice is this, enjoy every period of your life. Never find yourself stopping and saying, I wish I was older for X reason. My teenager's grown up. My children are out of school. I don't have to pay college costs anymore. Hey, enjoy every one of them, even if you have to pay college costs, because they're all very special. And as you move along, you find out that uh, enjoying every minute is what's important about you know being here on this earth. So do it. That's an order. Good stuff. I had a thought come in the middle there. Get that. Get back to it at the end. 